little more on the back mobility just because I've gotten a couple requests for low back, mid back, and upper back ones. So again, we're gonna go a little more on the back side today. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. If there's anything you'd like to see going forward from here, again, just please message me. But for today, we're gonna go a little more for low back, mid back, and upper back. All right, guys, so we're gonna go a little longer on each and every movement. They're gonna be about a minute and a half to two minutes, just because they're gonna be pretty layered. So let's go ahead and start. Again, all you need to all you're gonna need is a mat as well as a chair. We have some angle mobility that we're gonna be working on. So I'd recommend the chair. Let me just go ahead and double check that we're on. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. All right, guys, all right. So you're gonna start off in that child's pose for today. We're gonna to switch some stuff up. So it's gonna be pretty layered, just like I said. So child's pose, I like to go knees at the outside of the on the outside of my mat, you're gonna sit back on your heels, extend out your arms. So here, you really wanna focus on dipping that upper back in, getting that nice little thoracic upper back stretch as well as a lat one. So again, you're welcome to always find the movement within the movement. So let's hang here for a little longer. From here, we're gonna go ahead and round that spine. Now, instead of lifting up, we're gonna drop Bring your hands out into a T position. You're gonna go straight into a scorpion. Right leg up, take it towards your left palm. Switch, left leg up, take it towards your right palm. Good, hands right by your side, and you push right back into that child's pose. Again, you're gonna rock if you'd like. You're gonna ground that chest, come laying down, hands out into the T going straight into that scorpion. So again, for those who are just joining, we're gonna go a little more on the back stretches for today. We're gonna go lower back, upper back, and mid back. You're gonna drop, hands out into the T, straight into that T spine, or actually scorpion, sorry about that. You wanna find a nice little rhythm whether it's faster than mine or slower than mine. So go ahead and continue that out. I think my video's lagging, but... Right. Perfect. Go ahead and continue that out. Again, we're gonna spend about a minute and a half to two minutes on each stretch. You're always welcome to find that movement within the movement. You wanna work nice and slow. If you would like to hold the scorpion for a little longer, please feel free to do so. The most important thing is gonna be breathing as you go through each and every one of these movements. We're here for another 30, so let's get in about two more. Fifteen seconds, guys. Again, the reason why we're going to be holding it a little longer is because each and everything is going to be pretty layered for today. So we're going to be working on, like I said, a lot of back, but there's going to be a lot of other components. So I want to take the time to just hold everything a little longer. All right, guys. So you're going to come into a cat camel. Again, it's going to be pretty layered. So wrists beneath your shoulders, knees beneath your hips. So go ahead and watch. What you're going to do is exhale, round, keep that curvature, sit back. So notice I still have that curvature in my upper back. From here, you're going to go shoulder car with your right arm, taking your time. Coming right back, you're going to do one hip car. So we should be fairly comfortable with those hip car shoulder cars. We're going to stick to one side for one minute. So one side of shoulder, one side of uh, knee. So again, you're going to round, keep that curvature, sit back. Take about a couple seconds for your shoulder cars. Come right back into the all fours, straight into hip cars. You want to find that nice little rhythm. Keep that curvature straight into shoulder cars. Right back onto all fours for your hip cars. What I want you to notice is, I've already mentioned this, I compensate. 
when I do my shoulder car, I will end up shifting my body weight. So when I'm in this position, it kind of limits me from compensating. So that's the reason why I like kind of sitting my um, butt back onto my heels as I perform it. And then another thing that I do is when I'm performing my um, hip car, I will kind of bend. So again, I compensate. So if you do the same, hold yourself accountable, don't do it or try not to do it. So we're here for another 15. Keep that curvature up. Coming right back onto all fours, you've got your hip car. So finish off with one more, and we're gonna go ahead and switch our side. Same exact thing. You wanna find that nice little rhythm, avoid the compensations. I do it, it's normal. Good, go ahead and switch. Now I'm gonna perform it facing you. So, wrist beneath your shoulders, knees beneath your hips. You're gonna go cat camel, sit right back. Go one shoulder car. Good, come back onto all fours, one hip car. Again, with the hip car, you wanna make sure that you're squeezing the glute at the top. That's gonna to be the key of that movement. So breathe with the movement, guys. Anytime you're doing your cat camel, you want to exhale on that way up. Just do there it is. So you exhale, round up, inhale, sit down. Find that nice little rhythm for your shoulder car. Come right back, perform one hip car. And take your time here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Again, the only thing that I would recommend for this one is you may be experiencing wrist pain if you have pre-existing wrist pain. So you're always welcome to go fists down or even hold on to some dumbbells. That should kind of ease the pressure on that wrist. Nice guys, you're here for another 20 seconds. So take your time. Again, you want to work on that curvature of that um, cat camel. What's up, guys? Good morning. So again, for those who just joined on, <clears throat> it's going to be a little more back-oriented. We're going to go low back, upper back, mid back, as well as our usual hips and um, other stuff. So you're here for another five, four, three, two, one. Rest. So this is where I'd ideally like for you to grab a chair. I'm going to show you two different variations of this one. This is going to be a nice little ankle mobility. So the reason why I would say chair is because you have leverage. So what we're going to do, again, I'll show you two ways. One is going to be done on a chair. One is going to be done on the ground. So I have my right foot propped up. What I'm going to do here is take my body weight onto that right foot and I'm just going to lean forward. The key is to not let my heels lift and I want to keep my knees going forward. So I don't want to bring them out and I don't want them to overly cave in. I want them to go over my second toe. So I want my knee to go over my second toe. This is going to really help stretch and just kind of loosen up all of the little deep muscles and tissues in that knee. You're welcome to kind of pulsate it a little bit, but again, the key is to keep that heel on the ground as well as keep your knee pointing forward. You can do the same thing on the ground. It's just, it's gonna be a little harder to get that leverage. So that's the only reason why I would say it's easier to do it on a chair, um, but you're welcome to do either one. I don't have the best ankle mobility, so for me, when I do it up on a chair, it's a little easier because I can get deeper into that stretch. So we're gonna hold here for another 30 seconds. Again, just make sure you're keeping that heel on the ground and you're keeping that knee tracking forward. If you feel that it starts getting intense, go ahead and just come out of it, reset, go right back into it. 15 seconds, guys. Again, you don't have to go too deep into it. If, you, if you're experiencing a lot of calf tightness, a lot of um, tightness in the front. Just again, come right back out of it, go right into it. Seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, one, rest. Same exact thing. Again, you're gonna prop the other foot, make sure that the knee is in line with your shin. You're gonna lean forward, making sure you keep your heel on the ground as you perform the movement, as well as keep the knee tracking forward and not to the sides. So I like to fully put my body weight onto it. That's why I'm slightly leaning. But even when I lean, you're leaning with that neutral spine. So I'm not rounding, I'm not slouching. I still have my chest up as I'm leaning forward. Continue that out. This one is a little brutal for me. I've had um, multiple ankle injuries in the past and it's usually been on one side. So it naturally tightens up a lot. So holding this is tough. But again, if it ever gets too intense, just come right out of it. Reset that movement. Continue that out, guys. We're here for another 20 seconds. No questions. Cool. Go ahead and continue that out. From here, we got a couple new ones. Again, we're gonna, after this one, we got a nice little low back one. I've been experiencing some low back pain. Um, so this is gonna be a nice little relief of that. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, rest. Go ahead and put your chair off to the side. I'll give you a couple seconds if you need to do that. All right, guys, you're gonna come back into that lying position. So, lying on your back. Now, two options. I like to grab from my shins. Another option is to grab from behind your thighs. So whatever you're comfortable with. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna gently rock. So I'm gonna bring my knees, my knees are gonna be parallel to my hips. I'm gonna bring them into my chest. When I do that, notice how I gain a nice little curvature in my low back. So we're gonna be here for a couple seconds. Just take it nice and slow. This is gonna take some of the low back pressure out of it. We're getting a nice little curvature in that low back when we perform these nice little rocks. In 10 seconds, we're just gonna hold it at our chest. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, go ahead and just hold. Again, you can either hold from your shin bones or behind your thigh, wherever is easier and more comfortable for you. Just hold your knee to your chest. If you would like to rock side to side, you're welcome to do that. Just go ahead and breathe here. Again, we're gonna just release some of the tension in that low back. Go ahead and continue that out for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and drop your hips towards the right. Now with that right hand, place them on your, on your thigh or on your knee and focus on opening that opposite hand towards the ground. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting a nice little stretch here. I wanna bring my hips to the ground and I wanna open up my upper body all the way. So the key is to get your shoulder blades on the ground. The way we're gonna do that is you're gonna take a deep breath in. With every exhale, try to open up. Again, inhale. With every exhale, try to open up. Very nice, guys. Keep going at that. That should give you a nice little pull all throughout here. Very nice. Let's go one last deep breath here. Exhale, open up just a little more. Very nice, guys. Hands back out into that T. Swing your hips to the center. Drop them on the opposite side. Apply pressure to them down. Again, the goal is to bring that shoulder blade to the ground. So deep breath in. As you exhale, inch yourself forward. This is gonna give you a nice little stretch all throughout here. For people who have QL tightness, which is back here, this is gonna help loosen that up just a bit as well. Again, take your time here. With every exhale, 
Try to inch yourself forward. Try to get that shoulder blade to the ground. Let's go last deep breath. Very nice, guys. Slowly come out of that. All right, so this again is going to be a nice little low back one. What you're going to do here is let's go ahead and lie down on our right side. Extend out your bottom left leg. That's not my left leg, that's my right leg. Bring your left leg over. So again, I'm lying towards my right. My left leg is on top, my right leg is extended. My right hand is gonna grab my left leg, so the top leg. With the back leg, you're gonna go ahead and swing it back and grab your ankle. So this is called our breath. So just to set it up one more time, lying on my side, swing that knee up top, grab that knee, grab your ankle. So from here, again, it's gonna be the same concept. You wanna get this shoulder blade to the ground. The way we're gonna do that is again with our breath. So you're gonna take that deep breath in, exhale, open up, exhale, open up. I know it's gonna be slightly discomforting. You just wanna move with that breath. For people who experience low back pain in this position, bring that top knee up. This is just gonna help um, lock your low back into place. So again, you would bring it higher. Same thing here, you're gonna move with your breath. With every exhale, you wanna bring that shoulder blade to the ground. So this is gonna be doing the same thing as the other one. You're gonna get a full right side, or this is my left side, a, whole, a full left side stretch. Um, and the deeper you rotate into it, or the more rotation you create, the deeper you're gonna feel that on your side, from your lat all the way down. So let's go ahead and continue that out. Again, for those who experience some low back pain, just bring your knee up a little higher towards your chest. This is called our bretzel stretch. So again, deep breath in, exhale, open up, bring that shoulder blade to the ground. Take your time here, guys. Because my hips are tight, I'm feeling this in my piriformis, so in my hip as well. Again, it's going to be a nice little full body one. It's a multi-joint mobility routine. Very nice. Let's stay here for another 15 seconds. If you would just like to hold, go for it. If you want to, again, take that last deep breath in and open up, you're welcome to do that as well. Seven, six, five four, three, two, one. Very nice, slowly come out of it. You're gonna switch your side. I'm just gonna switch here. So again, lie on top, swing that knee over, grab it and grab that ankle. The key here again is to get that shoulder blade to the ground. The way we're gonna do that is with every inhale and exhale. As you exhale, Create some rotation. It targets where you're most tight. So for mine, I'm feeling it all throughout my quad because my quads are tight. I'm feeling it in my hips because my hips are tight and my shoulders. It is a multi-joint mobility, so it is going to target multiple um, joints in your body. When it starts getting intense, I know that the, um, what we kind of lean towards is holding our breath but please try to find a way to kind of just breathe through that. Um, your breath is gonna be the one thing that's gonna loosen up that stretch and allow you to get as much rotation as possible. When you hold your breath in a, ten in a, in a stretch, what tends to happen is your body tenses up. So imagine stretching a muscle when it's already tense. That will not feel good. 
So again, you're welcome to come out of it just like I did. If you have any questions, let me know. I haven't even checked on that. We're here for another 20 seconds. All right, cool. Let's continue that out. Go ahead and take your time here. Good, guys, 10 seconds. Again, feel free to hold or feel free to take that last deep breath in. Five, four, three, two, one. Very nice, come out of that. Let me know in the comments if you guys like that one or not, or just how it felt for you. All right, guys, come into your 90-90. You're gonna go right knee forward, left knee back, making sure that we have a 90 up front, 90 degrees in the center, 90 degrees with the back foot. So now again, we're gonna include some more back mobility with this one. So what you're gonna do, instead of leaning forward as we usually do, you're gonna take your hand and slide it outside of that knee. The more you rotate, the more you're gonna feel it in your hip as well as in your back. So you wanna slide underneath and because of the fact that we just worked on the breath so we should feel a little looser, which should help us kind of inch ourselves lower into this one right here. So rotating deeper into it, you're going to feel it in that hip. You're going to feel it in that back. You may be feeling it other places as well, depending on where your general tightness is. If you would like to hold, please feel free to do so. And just move with the breath. Again, this one is going to go a little lighter. I just want to make sure that we are targeting what you all are requesting. So go ahead and continue that out. We're here for another 20 seconds. Go ahead and continue that out. For those who just joined on, we're going a little more back focus for today. We've got lower body, lower body, uh, lower back, upper back, mid back. We had a nice little chunk of back stuff. So I will be posting the video on my Facebook channel, on our arenas page, as well as on the YouTube page. So if you have the chance, please go back and check those out. I think we had some pretty cool ones. Go ahead and switch your side nice and slow. So again, with the bretzel stretch that we just did, this should allow you to get a little more rotation. Just remember you're creating that 90 up front, 90 in the back, 90 in the center as well. Move nice and slow. With the rotation, you're gonna be targeting your hip as well as your back with the movement. Two birds with one stone. We're here for another 20 seconds, guys. So take your time here. Again, for those who are on with me throughout the whole thing, let me know what your thoughts are on the back movements that we've done. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know how the bretzel stretch felt for you. Let's go 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Very nice, guys. We've got about three more. These are gonna be a little more intense, so we're gonna get that heart rate up just a little bit before we lower it back down. So high point push-up position. We're going to go into our spider walk. Again, it's going to be layered. So, high plank, step that right foot in. From here, drop your elbow, lift up. From here, drop that back knee down. You're going to go hip stretch or hip flexor stretch. From here, sit, your, sit back onto your heels. You're going to get a hamstring stretch. We're going to go same side. Lift that knee back up. Drop that elbow, lift up. Drop that back knee, get that nice little hip flexor stretch in, sit back, 
Nice little hamstring. You want to find a rhythm here. Drop the elbow, lift up, drop the back knee, hip flexor stretch, sit back onto your heels for your hamstring. Same side again. There it is, hip flexor. If you would like to hold any of these for a little longer, please feel free to do so. And just breathe with that movement, guys. Again, today is gonna to be a little slower. We just wanna make sure that all of the movements that we're doing feel good. Thirty seconds. Again, even with your spine walk, try to get as much rotation when you are rotating outward. I like to think about creating a straight line from my bottom hand to my top hand. It's a nice little shoulder mobility as well. Continue that out. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to just comment below and I'll go ahead and answer them the best that I can. 10 seconds to go, guys, before we switch. We're on this side. Again, you're dropping the elbow, lifting up. Drop that back knee, hip flexor, sit back, hamstring stretch. Go ahead and switch, same exact thing. You go ahead and do it facing you all. So high plank, step that left foot in, drop that elbow, lift up. Drop that back knee, hip flexor stretch, sit back onto your heels for that hamstring stretch. It's up to you how fast you want to take these movements or how slow you want to take these movements. So please just take your time. One thing that I would recommend is a pad for your knee so you don't end up bruising it or just aggravating any pre-existing knee pains. And just move with the breath. Again, what tends to happen when we hold our breath is our body tenses up. I know that sometimes when we are doing a stretch that is slightly uncomfortable, we do tend to hold our breath. So just find a way to breathe. Again, you want to find that nice little rhythm, whatever that is for you. You're here for 30 seconds. Continue that out, guys. 10 seconds. We've got about two more from here. We'll be up on our feet for this upcoming one, slightly seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, rest. Very nice, guys. Go ahead and slowly come up onto your feet. This is gonna be a toe touch squat. That's gonna be pretty layered again. So, you are going to go hip hinge into that squat. So go ahead and follow along. Hip hinge down into that squat. Chest up nice and high, knees out. From here, hands on the ground. Go into a bear position. Hold your bear. From your bear, straight up into that down dog. Good, back in the bear. Bring your feet in, back into that squat. Hands on the ground, hips up. So again, your starting position is hips back. Hands on the ground, into your squat. Hands on the ground. Step your feet back into that bear. From your bear, hips up into that down dog. Good. Back into that bear. Step your foot in. Into that squat. Hips right back up. There it is, guys. You want to find that nice little rhythm. If you would like to hop from your squat to your bear, you're welcome to do that. Or you can take that step back just like I did. You're welcome to hold each position for a little longer. Up to you, whatever you are comfortable with. If 
if you feel that your hips are tightening up with the movement, step out of it for a couple seconds, go right back into it. Very nice, guys. Keep that up. Hips back, down into that squat. From your squat, you have your bear. From your bear, down dog, and backwards. Again, you're welcome to either hop or step back, whatever you are personally comfortable with. We've got a couple more to go, guys. Let's go, last one here. So last hip hinge, down into that squat. From your squat, you're either gonna step back or hop back into that bear. From that bear, down dog. Go ahead and come right back up. Finish off with that movement. I'll give you another seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Very nice, guys. Let's go with our last two. We're gonna go into our lateral lunge. So the way you're gonna perform your lateral lunge is feet start off together. You're gonna step out with your right foot. So let me just demonstrate real quick. You're gonna go hips back and to the side. Bring that hand to the base of the foot. Rotate, there's a lot of rotation in what we do today. Then you switch. Hips back and to the side. Palm comes down to the base of the foot and you add that nice little rotation. Again, with all of the back stretches that we've done today, you should be going a little deeper into that stretch. So take your time here. One thing that I do want to mention is when you are going into that lateral lunge, be sure that you are going hips back and to the side. So you have one straight leg, one bent leg. Think about the movement that way. Continue that out, guys. Our last one is gonna be back down on the ground, and we'll end off with our nice little deep breaths. Let's go two more on each side. And last one, guys. From here, we're gonna go back down on the ground, back against the ground. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. You're gonna go just planting your feet comfortably on the ground, hands on your rib cage. You're gonna take a deep breath in, allow your rib cage to expand. Exhale, compress that rib cage down. I want you to notice where your breath is coming from. When you take that deep breath in, what do you feel elevate? Do you feel that your chest goes up first? Do you feel that your belly gets nice and round? What we wanna do is we wanna push that breath down into our belly, making sure we create that nice little uh, curvature, that nice little circle, and then exhale, bring that belly button towards the spine. What tends to happen is um, when we are nervous, when we're um, anxious about something, we do tend to breathe from our chest. That is something that we want to stay away from. We want to get deep breathing, and deep breathing involves pushing that air down, allowing that belly to expand, exhaling, pulling that belly button into the spine. Let's go our last deep breath. Take your time here. Slowly exhale and rest. Go ahead and sit up nice and tall. Thank you for joining, guys. Again, this one was a little more back oriented for those who have been requesting it. Please let me know how the bretzel and just a couple of the new ones felt for you and your low back, mid back, upper back. If there's anything you guys want me to include for the following weeks, whether it's different variations of a stretch or if you come to me with, hey, my hip is bothering the crap out of me. Whatever it is, I'll go ahead and include that in the following week's mobility. So yeah, all right guys, thank you for joining and enjoy the rest of your day.